What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner. Back again, trying to make some sense out of nonsense. It's getting, it's getting tough. I, I'm having some problems doing it. And I'm out here with the dogs of, uh, of color and the dog of white privilege, who just got stung by a bumblebee. So apparently, the bumblebees do not like the white dog of privilege. Uh, or the white dog of privilege just wasn't smart enough to know not to go messing with the beehive. Where's the dog of color? He saw the bees, heard the bees, and fleed from the bees, thus remaining free from stinging, unlike the white dog of color. Anyway, not here to talk about the dogs getting stung by bees, but instead, I'm here to talk about being different with reason. Now, what do I mean by that? Every choice that you make in life should have some type of reason behind it. You shouldn't just make random decisions without thinking it through. Um, most people don't operate like that. When you get up to go get a chair, you don't get up and just say, you know, I'm going to go over there and just pick that chair up and put it back down uh, and then go back over and sit down where I was before. Most of the time you go get the chair because you're going to use the chair or you need to move the chair or something like that. So most of the time your brain, when it decides to make a choice, there's some benefit to it. There's some reason. And when it comes down to supporting President Trump, uh, considering the overwhelming amount of criticism that comes from the left and from ignorant people who don't realize how they're being played, if you're going to support Trump, you better do it for some type of reason. See, um, when I made the decision to support President Trump and any president for all that matter, especially, uh, you know, in the past, most of the time I voted uh, since I've been in a grown man, you know, and I had my walk away experience a couple years back. Uh, I started really looking at the policies of the Republican Party and decided I'm going to most likely vote Republican. Now that I know what I know about all of the, the Democrats, I would never, ever, 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 never vote Democrat again. But nonetheless, when it came down to Trump, I said, now here is a person who they are making out to be extremely controversial because of all the accusations of him uh, being a racist, sexist, misogynist, Ku Klux Klan, um, Nazi, traitor, um, whatever else title they can throw on him. I'm saying to myself, wow, Kev, is it really worth it uh, for you to say, you know what, I'm going to become public about my support of Donald Trump, knowing that I'm going to catch heat, starting with the black community. You did what? You voted for who? Man, what's your problem, brother? If I can call you a brother. All of that stuff that comes along with supporting Trump, you ain't going to do that just for the heck of it, just to be different. Now, there are some people out there that that's just how they operate. They're different for nothing. You know, we're talking about people who just make it their mission to be a social misfit. You know, they, they know most people dress a certain way. You know, but what they want to do is they want to be different. You got your gothic people, the black eyeliner and the black fingernails and stuff like that. And they're dyeing their hair black, you know, and, and, and putting fangs in their mouth and, and then piercings all down here. I guess they expect to just work at a, a tattoo parlor or somewhere where nobody's going to look at them and judge them by their parents. OK, um, these are people who just make it their mission to be different. They, they they thrive off of it. They like it. You know, you got your people who's just rebels. Like back in the day when when you had the guys that's like, no, sweetheart, you don't want to get involved with a guy like me. See, I tell you, I'm no good for you. And the girls just loved them. That's because they were no good for me. It's like, Johnny, I don't care. I love you, Johnny. I want to be with you. You don't know what you're saying. I'm no good, I tell you. There's some nice Joe down the street that will be better for you, sweetheart. But I can't be with you because I don't play by anybody's rules. And everybody loved that. That was the person that just wanted to be different for being different. Just a rebel. I'm going to make sure I stand out as a social misfit. But as a black, Republican, conservative, Trump supporter, you know, you don't get a lot of benefits socially by being a black Trump supporter. I mean, there's no girls are just banging down my door like, oh, girl, I love the way he support Trump. He's so sexy. Nobody's nobody's doing that. Nobody's sitting back wanting to interview black Trump supporters from the media for the simple fact they know that we're the worst nightmare to their fake, phony narrative of racism. So they don't want to. They don't want to do that. Plus, they know to be a black Trump supporter, you got to bring it. You have to come with some type of reason, logic, knowledge, information, something like that. So 
when they step to us talking about why you support Trump and they come with all the emotional rant and all of the talking points they didn't heard from the liberal media. Well, we're already equipped with that because we know we have to match the depth of accusations and persecution with our effort to study and understand what's really going on. So then if we, this way we could blow them up when they come to us. So when I said, man, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to step out and I'm going to support President Trump. Um, I said, why? Why, Kev? Don't just do it to be different. Don't just say, man, you know what? I want to be a maverick. You got to have some type of reason. And so what I'm telling all of those out there that even going into the 2018 elections, they are simply saying, I hate Trump and he gets me sick. But yet for no reason, you ain't got no reason why you ain't going to vote for Trump. Yet, let me tell you why, what your reasons are in a second. But first, let me justify my reasons for supporting him. First things first, I look at how does it benefit me and America as a whole. Now, I don't care about his personal life. I don't care about who he paid off and all that stuff. You know what I care about? I care about the fact that he's renegotiating trade deals for America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, t he's sick and tired, along with me, of us being pimped by all the other countries. So he's supporting trade deals, uh, renegotiations of trade deals. These are things that are important to America, okay? All right, he, he got rid of ISIS. Now, last I remember is somebody else said, now listen, ISIL is going to be very difficult to get rid of. It's going to take some time. And for anyone to think that they can just come in and get rid of them overnight, it's, it's just plain ridiculous. Well, guess what? President Trump came in, got it done within a year. All right. I mean, I look at things like immigration, which the Democrats know that they could have fixed many, many years ago when they had the power. And, and even the Republicans, too. But nobody had the gall. Nobody had the testes. Nobody had the guts to step up and say, hey, man, this is a problem. OK. And when Donald Trump said it during the campaign that, hey, let's deal with immigration. You know what I said? This man is echoing something that I've been thinking about for a long time. For all of those out there to say Donald Trump's telling you all what to think. The awesome thing about being a conservative is that we use reasoning when we make our choices. Therefore, it's not that he told us what to think. It's just that we already thought that. And he simply confirmed it and echoed what we already thought. We're not like the left. We're not like the sheep that says, please download information into our brains. And then we'll regurgitate it when we have a confrontation with the Trump supporter. Yeah, no, we sit back and say, hey, these are practical ideas and it makes sense. And therefore, I'm waiting for a candidate that says something that makes sense. And when they do, you say, now, now, now see this person, that person's talking right. He, he makes sense. All right. So Trump. When he deals with immigration, I'm going, that makes sense. And it can be addressed and fixed, but the Democrats and even some Republicans, they don't want to fix it. All right. Other things like national security. Hey, Caesar, get over here. You know what? Let, 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 let close that. Close it. Got people messing with my garage door. Dogs about to get smashed in the garage. Yeah, I got my old man walking around the house. He's like Fred from Fred Sanford, and I'm like Lamont, and we go at it, you know. He'd be like, here come the big one, Elizabeth, I'm coming to see you. All that stuff, he, he goes through that sometimes. Every once in a while, he just likes to play with electronics. You know how old people are, just pushing buttons. But anyway, nonetheless, almost smashed my dog in the garage. Anyway, bottom line, look at national security. These are things that make me say these are logical reasons to support the president. National security is a major problem for me. I don't want a weak president that will allow other countries like North Korea to develop nuclear weapons or Iran to take all our money and show no results. We didn't get nothing for it. We made an investment and walked away butt naked. We got nothing to show for our investment. Yeah. How about this? Tax reform ain't been done in God knows how long. So for him to come in and do tax reform, which, of course, helped a lot of people get bonuses, get great tax returns and jump started the economy. I mean, I'm thinking that's a good reason. OK, I'm not just out here saying I'm supporting Trump because I just want to stand out. No, you think about that stock market at an all time high, breaking records, low unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are good reasons. Black businesses opening up all over the place. More black businesses opened up under this leadership within two years than years, years before. Uh, women opening up businesses. These are reasons, okay? 
Yeah, these are real, legitimate, tangible reasons to support the president. Supreme Court justice, absolutely. I will vote for a president who's going to put in an originalist in the Supreme Court. Yeah, I don't want somebody who's going to put an activist in the Supreme Court. These are reasons. How about this? Ending the war on coal. People in West Virginia love it. They're like, yeah, man, put me back to work doing things like fighting sanctuary cities that will prevent unnecessary killings of illegal immigrants that shouldn't have been here. They shouldn't have been here. People that maybe even were deported several times, but for whatever reason, just slid back over here and God forbid ended up killing somebody and all the Democrats just kind of look away like what? I didn't hear nothing, man. Yeah, but yet President Trump comes in and he's fighting this kind of stupidity. And I say to myself, that's a good reason to support a candidate. Even if I'm gonna take some heat. Yeah, lowest uh, amount of people on food stamps in years. These are good reasons. Unlike the left who they hate Trump, but they hate Trump for nothing. Yeah, they're hating Trump with no purpose, with no reason. Let me give you some of their reasons. We don't like Trump because he cheated on his wife. Ain't got nothing to do with you. What they got to do with you, huh, punk? Huh? Yeah, hating him cheating on his wife ain't got nothing to do with you. It's how he runs the country. Putting money in your pocket, securing your jobs, making sure you're safe at night. That trumps him cheating on his wife, in my opinion. Yeah, things like, oh, he colluded with the Russians just because the Democrats told us and the corrupt, crooked FBI, CIA, DOJ, and all of them put this whole thing together. But because um, they told me that, and it really doesn't impact my life and Russia didn't change any votes or anything. But because my candidate didn't win and this justifies my hatred for him, I'm going to overlook how his presidency benefits me. And I'm just going to go ahead and say that's a reason to just hate on Trump and get him out of office. Stupidity. How about this one? Trump paid two hookers and, and to shut him up. Hey, what they got to do with you? Huh? Trump is a grown man. Those girls were grown women. It was a business transaction. Then now all of a sudden they have buyer's remorse and they want their money back along with taking down the president if they can. But none of that stuff is a real reason to just say, well, I hate Trump because we all kind of figured Trump had a pass. OK, all right. But we voted for him anyway. Uh, things like this. You know what? Trump, he 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 hates what Mexicans. He hates black people. Arabs, Jews, women, the environment. He's a Nazi. He's a white supremacist, all because CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, the failing New York Times, and all of the Democrats said he was. And see, this is how you know. That is a part of their game, their ongoing effort and, and tactics and strategy against any Republican, but against Trump more so than ever for the simple fact. Trump still isn't a true necessary Republican. He got his own style, okay? He doesn't play by any of their rules. See, the Republicans and the Democrats for years, they all had the unspoken. It's like, yeah, we all know we corrupt, but let's not go too hard on each other, okay? If y'all get into power, we might act like we resisting a little bit and fighting back, but let's not expose the real corruption. Let's not over tip the apple cart. Let's just go ahead and kind of agree to disagree, or swag, uh, uh, squabble a little bit here and there but at the end of the day we all need to keep our jobs but then you get trump in there and he's a total maverick and he's going ahead and calling out both parties and any type of corruption they're like oh we got to get this dude out so let's go ahead and amp up the the racism card let's amp up all the sexism who contains all of this hatred in one person you're trying to tell me that trump has all of this hatred within him but we only just found it out in the last two years that's right we loved him all the way up until he ran against the democrats see here's how you know they fake before uh john mccain back in the day he was he was a racist yeah when he was running against barack they pulled the racist card out on him just like they do all the other republicans but now he started to hate donald trump and he's a hero He's a maverick. We loved him. 80% approval by all of the Democrats who at one point was talking about he uh, he demonstrates racial uh, tendencies and the people who support him. But now all of a sudden, this guy's amazing. Just like Comey, he was hated when he when he went out and he, he talked about Hillary's emails. Then all of a sudden, he hates Trump and we love him. Same thing with Omarosa. Anybody turns on the president cohen he's garbage he's just he's donald trump's fixer he's a crook he's a criminal but hey let's bring him on the show because now he hates donald trump we love him see they're fake 
These aren't real reasons to hate the president. These are made up. He can't be a Nazi white supremacist, but yet all of a sudden decided I'm going to deport the last living Nazi back to Germany. Or he's a racist, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and 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 cut a black lady sentence short and bring home some black basketball players that were found guilty over in in um in in China. But I'm gonna bring them back. But but I do I do hate black people though. I ain't gonna even lie to y'all. Oh, by the way, I did date a black woman for about three years, but it was all a cover up of all my racism. Yeah, he's a misogynist, but yet at the same time, he has tons of women that he hired. Look at this. He got Nikki Haley, Sarah Huckabee, Elaine Chow, Kristen Nielsen, uh, Kellyanne Conway, Hope Hicks, uh, Betsy DeVos, Linda, my, my, I think it was Linda Mahano or something like that. All of these women, but yet, He's a misogynist. You see how ridiculous the left's reasons to hate the president is? You're hating without reason, whereas I'm supporting with reason. And that's my whole argument. If you're going to build an argument of why you should or should not support a candidate, at least do it with some type of logical reasoning behind it, lest you just find you a hater for nothing. I'm out here hating the president without reason, meaning I'm a lemming. I'm a big fat sheep, and I'm going to do exactly what the shepherd said, and I'm going to tell you why people on the, the left confine themselves to the big old sheep fold, because see what the left has done, and I'm going to close on this. The left have been great shepherds over their flock, and I'm going to tell you how. See, if all of the sheep have witnessed at one point the wolves attacking other sheep, they get the hint. They're like, wait a minute, man. There's wolves out there. And there's, we got to stick together. And then there's a shepherd out here that's keeping us all together. And he's saying, look, don't go too far. Because when you go outside of this pasture and you go back by them trees, there is some wolves out there. Now, let's go back to, say, the 50s, 60s, and, and even beyond. All right. There was a lot of racism, open racism. People can see it all over the place. You didn't have to go far to find some racism, okay? Meaning, like today, where they say racism, you open your door and racism, like, hey, how you doing? What are we doing today? It's me, racism. I live right outside your door. Come on, let's go ahead and go and hate some people, okay? Let's demonstrate all of this racism. Yeah, that's what they want you to think right now. Back in the day, you can literally come out your house, walk down the street, and get called all kind of names, and you kind of act like, I don't hear that. And you go to the store, you get discriminated against, you go to restaurants. You know, that's real racism, okay? Those were reasons for the sheep to say, yeah, I might want to go ahead and stay on pasture because there are real wolves out there. But all of a sudden, times change. Now, for all we know, all of the wolves are gone, all right? But yet, they don't let them out the pasture. They keep telling the sheep, don't you go out there because all them wolves out there. Now, the shepherd, they know. They know all the wolves are gone. They know that there's no immediate danger. You might see a wolf every blue moon here and there, but they're not rampant. They're not just sitting out posted up around the outskirts of the fence going, I can't wait until one of these sheep get a little too close because I'm going to have me some uh, sheep tonight for dinner. That's what I'm going to do. No, no. But they want all the sheep to think that. And because the sheep simply just believe that the shepherd has his best interest, they're staying right there on the pasture. They're sitting back like, let's just stay right here and trust that uh, the shepherd is telling us the truth. We're not going to wander too far because we're all just going to think exactly what the shepherd tell us. So if the shepherd says, don't go out there, it's scary, and you're going to get attacked, the sheep say, okay, okay, yeah. But if one of the sheep decide, you know what, are there wolves out there? Is it really? Bad, as they say it is, the shepherds say it is. Let me go out there and see if there's still wolves out there. The shepherd gets real mad. And he says, well, hold up. Let me get my cane and get the sheep back on the pasture because I can't have the other sheep finding out that ain't no wolves out there anymore because then I would lose all of my sheep. And that is the tactic of the Democrats because all they do is tell all minorities, there's wolves out there. There's so much racism, sexism, homophobe, xenophobe. If you leave our pasture, you're going to get it. You're going to get attacked. So don't question us. We know better. I'm telling you. Just take our word. They're out there. Well, can you identify it, point it out? No, no. No, you don't need to see it. 
Okay, take our word for it. Well, like who? Can you show us some examples? No, no, no. See, now you're asking too many questions, sheep. Get your butt back over there with the rest of them and continue to bah. Okay, and see, what we're using you for is all of your wool equivalent to votes. Okay, we'll shear you at our will and we'll go ahead and sell all of that wool and make money off of it. Well, guess what? We'll keep you on our pasture and we'll drive you to the polls, which keeps us in office and keeps our pockets fat. And that is how they've been playing the minority community for years, making them think there's still wolves outside the pasture. Don't go out there. We're responsible for watching over and protecting you. Now, that might be tight, but it's right. You've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, breaking it down. Breaking it down. Breaking it down. Breaking Look at that. Look at the dog of color. Come here. Sammy. Caesar. Come. How disobedient are these? White dog of privilege. Come here. What the heck? Disobedient animals. Get your butts over here. Say hello to the public. Caesar, you want to tell the people how it felt to get stung by a bee? Yes, uh, it was very horrible. Um, I felt a burning sensation in my butt, and then all of a sudden, um, then I, I, I got I got wind of what was really going on, and 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 I didn't think I could get stung in the butt because I'm a white dog of privilege. See, see, that's the problem. He didn't think he could get stung because he's a white dog of privilege. Yeah. Anyway, God bless you. Find me on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, check me out Wednesday nights at 7:30. I'm gonna have a guest that our our feed got cut last week. It went out. Also, I'm going to be making an announcement about a sponsor who um, uh, I'm going to be sponsoring. I appreciate it. Somebody contacted me and said, hey, man, would you sponsor me? He's a supporter, and, and I appreciate that. He said, would you sponsor my product? And I checked out his product, and I said, absolutely. I'll give a shout out. That's right. So uh, I'll be making an announcement about that. Also, find uh, if you want to support Kevin in Kevin's Corner, there's links in the bottom to do so, uh, and I'd appreciate it. So God bless you. Find you next time in Kevin's Corner.